Good morning, Nature Ninos. We are here this morning for part two of Designing on a Dime with my friend and colleague, Nikki Julian. I am pulling up the screen here and we are going to get started here. So we've got a wonderful picture here of one of our friends, little Anya. This is her Dream Backyard with a Twisty Slide. We will be talking about that a little bit more in just a bit. I am just scrolling through my slides. We did the first part of this, I think it was exactly two weeks ago. And Nikki and what she had to share was so very popular, we decided to come back for part two. So what I'm scrolling through here is the uh, the presentation from part one. So if you're new with us today, I just recommend that you just get uh, get onto our Nature Ninos website or our Facebook page, and you can watch um, the recorded version of part one um, because we do not really want to spend the time going through that again today. We want to jump right back in with a few families that we had last time to get going again. So my name is Sally Anderson. I'm the early childhood um, coordinator for Nature Ninos, which is a program of the New Mexico Wildlife Federation. And this series of Nurturing with Nature, um, a parenting series, this is the fifth out of six that we will have all together. And it is a partnership between Nature Ninos, New Mexico Wildlife Federation, and the city of Albuquerque Parks and Recreation. So it's been real fun. Um, we, uh, each of these modules, we've had a few parents join us, but we are able to um, see how many folks are actually watching the recorded versions. And we've had a lot of people who have been logging on after the fact and watching these modules. So hopefully you've been enjoying them and drop us a line if you have, because it's always good to know if, uh, one is feeling appreciated for their work. So here is my friend, Nikki. She is a Playscape designer and educator and a coach, a certified playground safety inspector. She's from Arizona. She's a master gardener, a desert landscaper, an environmental educator, an interpretive guide, play worker, guardian of childhood. She's got a lot going on. Um, she also works for the Arizona Wildlife Federation, so she's kind of like a sister organization, and she's a friend of Creepy Crawlies and pretty comfortable outdoors. So we have Mama Shannon and Mama Misty with us for sure this morning, and we're just going to jump right in. So Nikki, I've got these few slides, you know, just the kid stuff, but otherwise it's you. So you can address these little kitties' dreams now. Um, or go to your other stuff, however you want to do it. I will keep time and we'll try to be done by noon today. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm actually going to come back to these beautiful dream yards in just a little bit. I'm going to give uh, kind of an update or replay of what we talked about last time with some pictures. Um, and those, those okay. drawings oh, are I stopped the share so you could share your slides. Oh, good, good. Um, it is so wonderful to see that, um, that the kids were, um, you know, that you parents were inspired, but also that um, you got the kids to be inspired too, because when they take ownership of what they're wanting to do, then um, obviously it, it, they love it even more and it's a much more meaningful space for everyone. And, um, and, and you'll absolutely love it looking back now that my kids are grown, looking back on those pictures um, 20 years later is, to, is uh, it really reminds you of um, you know, how wonderful uh, that interaction is and how meaningful it is to them and how it helped to create wonderful, the wonderful people you're growing. So. Um, so awesome, 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 and I'm looking forward to coming back to those. Um, so my, uh, my slideshow is just going to show you some um, examples of what we were talking about last time, which was plants, pathways, and places. And, um, and then we're going we're gonna to go back into some uh, practical design work, which I'm really always excited about. So um, this first slide here, can you see it? There's a... Yes. Okay really lush and, and I know you might have to move your uh, your picture gallery views and so since it's sharing my screen I'm guessing it's recording off of my screen what I'm going to do is drop our pictures down so hopefully it you looks see on my end it looks perfect because okay. there's there's only a few of us on the call right now 
and it's Fantastic. perfectly. Is that the same for you, Shannon and Misty? You got a good view of the pictures? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So um, now I live down in Arizona right now. This is not Arizona. This is my house in Washington State. Um, left there in 2010 and um, absolutely loved playing around with this yard. It was a pretty blank yard with just a, just a, a sloping uh, ground. A tiny little bit of this wall was put in, but really not very much. And um, this was just no extra money. I just found the chunks of cement in the next door neighbor's uh, vacant lot, asked him for them. He's like, please take them away. And then um, all the plants were ones that friends gave me. Plants grow really well in Washington State near Puget Sound. And um, so there's always people giving away stuff. So I don't think this cost me really any money. It looks like there's some bark I've put in. So that probably cost me some bags of bark, but otherwise it was all labor and fun. And um, these pictures kind of show um, how plants, places, and, uh, and pathways can, kind of, can all kind of come together. And um, even though this is Washington State, I'm gonna show you some pictures of Arizona in a little bit. And if I can make a uh, picture, you know, the uh, yard just as lush in Arizona, then, um, you know, that's high desert, you know, well, desert, desert, um, and we can do it anywhere, right? So um, it's a lot of fun and um, a lot of fun for the kids too. So uh, first thing I wanna talk about is uh, pathways. And this is uh, my niece showing off a couple of different pathways. She actually played kind of a game of hot lava around this house and was able to go around finding all kinds of great pathways without putting her feet on the regular dirt. Um, but what I'm trying to say in these pictures is, is look at that texture. Um, it doesn't have to cost you a lot. In fact, it might look like uh, pretty boring or old or junky, um, you know, to our, and, to our adult eyes. And but it, it hasn't it's loaded fantastic. yet, Mickey, Mickey. Oh, okay. Okay. Just so you know, it hasn't loaded yet, at least not right. on my end. I don't know if they're seeing the next picture. All right. I think I have to like, you have to tell me what the delay is. So what we're looking for is, is yeah. a young girl jumping from spot to spot. On do you see it, path. Shannon and Misty? Do you see it yet? You do? Okay. So that oh, means fantastic. it's on my end. So maybe um, if you two could just give a thumbs up once it's up, then that will help because now I finally see it. We have quite a lag at my house. Okay. I finally see it now. So I, I'm not going to jump in, but um, maybe a thumbs down if it's not there yet. And, all, and it sounds like if you're seeing it, that will help Mickey know. Awesome, awesome. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll, I'll start over again really quick on this. This was my my niece. Um, like I said, she's she. Uh, we were at a friend's house, and she was able to go around this entire house looking for uh, pathways where she didn't have to touch the dirt, and um, had a great time playing with this. And our our adult eyes might see some stuff as kind of junky, but the kids absolutely see paths as places to play. And so that's the important part is um, we can make paths of varying heights, of varying textures, of varying widths, and that makes it all an adventure. Also, if it leads to somewhere where you don't quite know where it's going, like it's gonna go around the corner, that gives that sense of adventure as well. And, um, and there's tons of fun ways to do that um, and, and doesn't cost anything at all. And the pictures you saw last, it was, uh, slats of, and let me know when these pictures have come up, there's a hillside and a, good, we got one. Um, a lot of these are not gonna cost you anything, um, or maybe you just, you know, get found materials from friends or um, uh, cut down, you know, if you have uh, logs in your, in your yard or trees that need to be cut down, you can always use those, or rocks. My favorite was like picking rocks out of places I didn't want them and putting them in places I did want them. Um, so going up a slope, there's um, an idea of using um, log cookies as the stairs. Really great sense of adventure. Um, all of those are a little bit, you know, because it's organic, there's a little bit of a, a leveling thing. It's not going to be totally right, and it shouldn't. That's the fun part. Um, and all the pieces are different sizes. And as they decay, you probably see on some of those logs, they're broken. So as they decay, that gets even more adventurous. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we have a spiral um, a spiral maze, and it can be an actual kind of maze where there's dead ends, or it can just, you know, um, be kind of a spiral of life also. And that's just rocks half sunk in the ground. Um, pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, it's, you know, you can map it out with, uh, with sticks, have the kids help you map it out, and then put the rocks in. The nice part about it is if it's not working for you, take those rocks out, do it again, <laughs> or do it a different way. Can I... Can I add, Nikki, that I, I've done some um, workshops on labyrinths. 
And boy, oh boy, are they a wonderful thing for kids. They're super, super calming. Misty, I could see um, Weston enjoying a labyrinth. And when I was still at the NMSD Albuquerque Preschool, we actually did a painted labyrinth of this cool little turtle. And um, we used it quite a bit to kind of just center kids. And sometimes they take their little trikes out there and they go around it. It was a really cool tool. And the labyrinths too, you can, they don't have to be on flat ground. You can make them indented. You can make them up into a hill. Um, you don't have to just use rocks. You can use, um, you can use like, uh, I was talking a little bit about this, the, um, the fencing, the bamboo fencing. You can, you can even use that. It can be at varying heights too. So a child who is taller or a child who's shorter can enjoy looking over the fence in various spots. Um, and that makes it kind of, you know, again, mysterious and fun. Um, you can also do the same thing with plants. Um, that you know are going to grow um, upward or tall, um, creating mazes underneath is excellent. So um, my next picture up is a uh, little girl in pink pants. Do you see that one? Awesome. Thanks, Shannon. Um, here's a couple examples of pathways that are up. Um, a lot of us, when we buy our houses, our yards are just kind of laser level. You know, it helps the bulldozers do what they need to do, um, and it helps us get a foundation for our house. But um, uh, we don't have to keep it that way. We can add dirt. We can add, um, you know, obviously it's easy to dig in, you know, take that excavated dirt and put it somewhere else. Um, on the left hand side is um, we, uh, a lot of places in Arizona, we or a lot of places in Phoenix anyway, we have a uh, flood irrigation where we open the um, um, flood gates and it, and it covers the ground. Um, that's really common in sports fields. So um, this school had uh, about four acres of um, of ball fields and it became a preschool. We didn't use that whole area. Um, but uh, in the landscaping that I wanted, I wanted very controlled uh, watering. So we put in a drip in the landscape and to keep the flood irrigation out of that area, because uh, it brought in quite a bit of weed seeds because it was right up out of the canal, um, we made a berm to keep that um, flood water out. And uh, the kids absolutely loved it. That was the hiking trail and they were on it all the time. Um, and again, these are these were kids at this preschool that had um, some different physical challenges. And Phoenix is a very flat city, so this was a, a chance for them. A lot of those kids, of being only four or five years old, had never really been out on a hiking trail. So this was a way for them to kind of get to know what uneven ground was. And it was very spongy at first, and then over time, it got much more compacted, and there were dips that were always there. And so it was different challenges as they came out. And of course, the weather. Um, you know, change as well if it was wet or if it was really dry. So that was pretty awesome as well. Um, and then uh, kids will find their own pathways too. Here's just the, the fencing that I had in that yard and a uh, different yard in Washington State. And there's my daughter, um, you know, going along the fence again, playing the, uh, that the ground is the hot lava and, and you can't step on it. So how to get around. Um, so a lot of times, you know, kids will find their own ways to create, uh, to create pathways. And um, and you know, if you're finding that you're at uh, another place or you're out in nature, you're out at a playground, um, you can get the ideas of, oh, they're using this to, to play on. Uh, we, can, you know, we can try that at home. And again, those, a lot of those are, hey, if you don't like it, change it up. Um, so I'm on the next one about plants and planters. Hopefully you can see there's some tire planters. Shannon's got it right on. Okay, a couple different types of, um, so, as I transition from, from pathways to plants, um, a lot of times we put in planters. And as you can see on the left, that, that planter wall is fantastic for sitting, but it also makes a great pathway as well. Kids love getting up there. You know, we often talk about um, outside, you know, kids aren't allowed to get on the table because they wouldn't do that inside. Outside is different. Um, and I, you know, it, as much as you can, let them play. If you've got a picnic table outside and they like getting on top of it, yeah, you eat there too. Well, you don't stand on the picnic table while you're eating, but otherwise, you know, it's fun to get on the table because you're not allowed to do that inside. And, and that's a nice part about outdoors. There's different rules. So planters can be the same way. You can see that planter on the left-hand side is an amalgamation of a bunch of different stuff. You've got some cinder blocks, some rocks, um, some uh, ceramic tiles that people made, some old bricks, um, and, and it's not perfectly level. That's the great adventure of it. A lot of uh, seen kids, you know, play on there. Uh, and then, of course, it's great for adults to sit there, and then it doubles as a, as a planter. Uh, on the right-hand side, there's some planters being made out of, uh, out of tires. Uh, if you do do this, uh, don't put edibles in there, um, because those tires will leach out, gosh knows what. 
um, but it's fantastic. Um, they make a great border. Um, you can paint them, make them interesting. That's kind of fun as well. Um, and then um, they also make a great place to keep your plants kind of protected. Um, little feet, you know, while plants are just getting established, um, little feet can easily run over a plant and destroy it. But once they're established, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of plants for play that, um, that we know of that um, can really stand a, a good beating uh, and children picking on them and, uh, and digging out and digging under them. But at first they often need their little place to, you know, to be protected. So tires are uh, a, way to, a way to make that happen. Um, and again, and also they create Nikki, isn't, um, in, mm -hmm. in my experience, Nikki, um, tires can often be found free or cheap too. Yes, yeah. Because there's a lot of places is where people will recycle them when they've sort of, you know, really died out. So again, at the preschool, we ended up getting tons for each classroom and the kids painted them together, but we got them for free. Great. So Great. Um, you just need to dig a little bit, but you can, mm -hmm. you can often find them. Um, yeah. Misty's asking where, I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like we actually reached out to some tire companies, if I'm remembering right, but we also got a few through, um, I want to say it was the Albuquerque, um, it was whatever the recycling center is called. Um, so yeah, with just a, a little bit of inquiry, usually, you know, even if you just asked people, to be honest with you, there's a lot of people who have like a spare tire or two just hanging around that they don't use anymore. Um, and, and they're super fun. We got some from the playground for the playground at the school for the deaf that we had them donated. These were like huge ones that were from like a tractor or something that we were able to put and literally make like a sandbox out of it because the, the tire was that huge. Yeah. And then we took two others and sort of overlapped. So it became a climbing, like a climbing structure. It did, um, we ended up, we ended up putting them flat after all because we were noticing some spiders were collecting in there and we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to create a space for unwanted uh, creepies and crawlies that could be dangerous that would go, you know, against the against the grain of things but um the kids just they loved it they like you know and, and young kids too especially boys are all into trucks and cars and things with wheels so this idea that you can actually use tires in that way is uh, i found really kind of motivating for them they they like the um the doubling up and thinking of using it in a different different way excellent thanks so um now i've got a picture of a yellow tree in the yellow ground, you can see that. Awesome, Shannon, thank you so much. Um, so uh, there's tons of different plants out there that are fantastic for play, but a couple things that you can think about is um, to let your plants kind of go. <laughs> um, let them, you know, we don't need to be so uh, picky about, we don't need to, um, we don't need to restrict them. We don't need to prune them as much as we are, you know, uh, please don't shape them into lollipops and, and um, you know, maybe at an interesting, you know, Queen's Garden or something like that, and they want to make interesting shapes out of it. But otherwise, um, you know, let them kind of go. There's a lot of trees out there that actually, especially in the desert, are creating shapes that protect themselves from the sun because the sun is so intense. So Palo Verde here in, uh, here in um, the Sonoran Desert in Phoenix is a really, really popular tree because it grows without any irrigation and it produces these really gorgeous yellow flowers. This is in my neighborhood on the left, this tree, just every Every spring just looks amazing and um, must be easily 30 feet wide and probably uh, you know, maybe 20 feet tall. Um, but a great little, um, just, just kind of a fairy magic land, really. Um, and on the right-hand side is uh, another tree, different location, same, same type of Palo Verde. And as it drops, those flowers um, really makes this very magical carpet underneath. Um, but the idea here is, like I said, to kind of let let trees kind of um, go and let your plants go a little bit and see where they can, um, you know, see how, see how big they can get, see how wild they can get. And that's quite a bit of fun. And again, if you don't like it, hey, then you, then you prune it later. Um, there's a picture of a dog in this one. You got it? Is that coming through? Awesome. Okay, so here's another couple ideas. Like I said, the um, a tree when it starts to overhang. Um, the one on the left there is at the Edible School Yard in uh, Berkeley, California, but it was beautiful how it was just a very small tree um, and that, that trunk is probably only a couple inches wide at the most, so it's a pretty new tree. Um, but they were able to carve out a little spot under the tree because it was weeping form and have a little space for, for kids to sit. 
Um, kids absolutely love hidey holes, but ones that are safe enough that they feel they can go to go to mom and dad. They don't want it to be completely dark. In fact, they really don't want it to be kind of dark at all. So a cave is better than kind of a tunnel because they can go into a little bit of space without, um, without feeling too far from you either. And so plants make a wonderful um, tunnel or cave because they can see out of them in a lot of different ways and they can escape out of them in a lot of different ways. Um, and then on the right hand side, um, you know, uh, plants are just for play for, uh, for our kids. Often we have pets at home that absolutely love being in the plants. The whole rest of the yard is rock and this is where the dog was whenever he was outside. He liked being in that. And this is one watermelon plant. One. <laughs> you know, I teased out the other seeds because you always grow them in, in like groups of three. Um, but we just kind of let it go and it absolutely loved the heat right here on the driveway. And uh, we didn't wind up being able to eat any of the watermelons because they didn't ripen. But, um, but it was a great way to reduce the heat island effect going on in our driveway and the dog had a, had a great time with it too. I don't have kids anymore at home, otherwise they would have they just loved it. Um, so yeah, the, the point there is, is let your plants go. And you know, when you think about plants of being, okay, they're, they're only around for a season or they're only around for a year, um, have fun with it. Um, it doesn't need to be like, oh, we've got to protect the plants. I'd rather kids get into plants and kind of destroy them. You might talk about protecting plants when they're small, like, oh, this is a baby. We need to be careful around it. But then at some point that baby's going to grow up and it usually only takes about a month and, or a couple months. And those plants are, you know, able to, able to withstand quite a bit of work. So I also wanted to show you a couple different places that you can kind of carve out of your areas. Um, so on the left is, uh, there's that cute uh, eclectic wall again. And again, it's a planter um, kind of holding back um, some plants behind it. Um, but there's also this wonderful area that um, is kind of shady. Um, there's different plants growing. There's some water harvesting that's going on. Um, and whenever I saw kids coming back, this is at the Cooperative Extension Office in Maricopa County, whenever a child would be wandering around in those grounds, they were gravitated to this because of the wall, probably because of the, a lot of the bright colors, but just had a great time playing there. There's, a, again, uh, uh, some different, different landforms, so they had a great time playing. Um, on the right-hand side is, again, if you, if you allow the kids to create their own space in there, um, this was at a schoolyard here in Phoenix, and they brought in at, uh, the front one is actually a piece of tin, like a really huge sheet that they cook bread on for at school, you know, or heat the lunches. And, um, and they, they intended to have, kind of have it as a place to kind of sit, but then it became this place where they put a bunch of rocks at, and behind it is actually um, an old piece of carpet that they put down. And the kids created these spaces. And I'm seeing conversation come up in the chat, and I'm going to come back to it in just yep, a second. I'm, I, I'm watching it. I was oh, just, good. I was waiting for, a, I was waiting for an end to um, uh, not completely interrupt you in the middle of a thought. Um, Shannon was just wondering yep. what the name of the, the fairy, the beautiful tree was. And then Misty was wondering, was it, is it Palo Verde? It's Palo Verde. There's four different varieties hey, here, Misty. In, here in Arizona, P-A-L-O. That's the palo uh, part and birdie feet. We probably here. have that here in New Mexico too. If they if they were to kind of that tree would probably do well here in our climate. Do you think? Um, it's not going to do well in Albuquerque, um, but the uh, lower okay. elevations it will do fine. Yeah, um, Albuquerque so is just our, too, because our elevation is too high. That's why um, it's it's okay. it's very frost tender. It really likes the heat. 122. These guys are totally happy. So if it gets under 50, they're like cold out. They're, you know, they're wimps like me when it comes to the cold you, weather. Do you, do you offhand know of one that might um, be similar to, like have a similar effect, but not, but would do okay here? Like I'm thinking of, um, oh gosh, is it mountain mahogany? No. Mountain mahogany is going to oh, be a fantastic be. shrub size, um, but it's not going to get to that overhang because it's only going to get to about six, eight feet at the most. Um, so one of the ones, that, one of the things I would love to do is is strictly about plants for for play in the in the Western United States and look at different eco zones and go, okay, this is you know, um, and and um, you know, off the top of my head, uh, again, when we think about plants in our native landscapes, especially the semi-arid areas, is they're going to grow in a way that protects them from the sun. Um, even up, you know, in Albuquerque as well, they're going to and that sun protection is going to help them from the um, from drought and also going to help them from cold weather. 
as well. So you get junipers that are really bushy because they're trying to protect their main trunk. Um, but you can kind of carve out quite a bit. Uh, I have to go look through my notes to see which ones grow in, in, the, um, in that zone. Uh, we have alligator junipers here. Do you guys have, do you guys get those? Or Utah junipers? Like a shaggy bark juniper. The fun part about I've them, seen them in the forest, some of the forest areas, but I haven't seen them in yards. I'm trying to pick my brain because again, at the School for the Deaf, we had a beautiful tree in the front entrance mm -hmm. that people used to, you know, maintenance used to roll their eyes because it would lose all of these nice, beautiful leaves and flowers in the spring, but it was like loose parts, you know, um, heaven. Yes. Because the kids loved playing in that and, yes. and other people would complain about it. So it might, that's when I was saying mountain mahogany, that's what I was thinking, but it's not that. And I'm wanting to say olive, but it's not, do, do, do Spanish olive trees get flowers in the spring? Um, I have an olive tree in my yard and I've never, it's flowers are really inconspicuous. So, um, okay, but again, so I'm, I'm going to keep in my brain, it's something yeah. else. Yeah, common names are kind of tough because they could be for a lot of different plants. Uh, uh, that when we say chaparral, I see it, that chaparral to me is, a, is a, um, an ecozone of a group of a bunch of different types of plants. To other people, it's a very specific plant. And then uh, other people that live in another spot, they're very specific that it's a totally different plant. So that's the hard part with the common names sometimes. And of course, I don't, I don't keep the scientific names in my head. I have to go to the, I have to go to the um, book for it. Um, but something to, something to think about is like you were talking about what makes really great loose parts. So um, Oh dear, did she freeze on you guys? Oh, Nikki, you froze. Come back, come back, come back. Hello. Yep, she's totally frozen. I was just doing a search here for shade trees that grow um, well in Albuquerque. Hopefully she'll come back. She knows so much. <laughs> oh my I know, God. she's super, yeah. She really very much is. There you are. She's um, there. there you are. You totally, you totally stalled there ah, for a minute. Right. I was just looking up um, New Mexico Albuquerque friendly shade shade flowering Chat, trees. Um, and I was Sally, there. we just got a um, a raywood ash. We just okay. got a raywood ash, and the the nursery said any of the ash trees love it here, and they're not very messy, and they're they, yeah. they grow really fast too. They create a neat seed um, that your kids are going to love because it's a really interesting loose, loose part. Um, and uh, maples also have a really interesting seed. And again, the tree is going to shed them at some point. And, um, and they're really, I think they're, they're interesting to play with because they've got like little wings to them. Mm -hmm. um, so neat stuff. I'll I just to, found an awesome uh -huh. document that I'll, I'm going to send it to Messenger just because I have us all in the same Messenger and that way I don't have to fiddle with my screen, but it's from New Mexico State Shade Trees for New Mexico. There's a whole big, huge, beautiful list here. I'll forward this to you guys. Great. And that's something when you and go to look for Hopefully you won't a... go away again, Nikki, because I don't know anything. Misty okay. was just saying, she knows so much. I'm like, yes, you better come back because I don't know squat. <laughs> you know, and you can, when you go to look at a tree, you can ask them, you know, well, when you say to a nursery what you're looking for, they're going to have, you know, their their idea of what you need and and like misty was saying you know okay this is a wonderful tree and they're going to tell you oh it's not messy because everybody's concerned about that you might not be you know if you want loose parts you you don't necessarily need to be concerned about that maybe what you want is a beautiful fall color um you may want um you know the the leaves that turn more purple uh ones that turn more uh brilliant yellow uh flowers in the spring how much does it drop and those are things that often, you know, especially with the amount of stuff that drops, the nursery is going to go, oh, you don't want that one because it's really messy. That, that should perk your ears and go, hmm, messy. <laughs> you know, that, yes, it creates more lawn care, but the kids absolutely love it. And, and uh, I think they're pretty interesting too. So um, yeah, I'll have to get back to you guys some more on, on, on plants because um, again, I want to look at your, your different zone and go, okay, this is, this is the you know, the height that they're at. But a lot of the stuff that grows um, a little bit north of, of Phoenix will grow fantastic in the Albuquerque, um, Albuquerque area of New Mexico. 
Um, I'm going to show you a couple more places, and then uh, we're going to move into um, designing the designing on your on your yards. Um, so a picture on the left are the are the two kids playing on a wall. Hopefully you guys see that one. Awesome. Okay, those are my two kids when they were youngsters. Um, um, I don't think you can do this at this national monument anymore. <laughs> Not quite sure, but um, they just love the walls. Again, we were talking about hidey holes. Um, my two kids were too scared to go into these areas when they had a roof over them. But when they didn't have the roof over them, the kids were all for it. They were climbing on the top on the walls uh, and could look through. So walls are a really neat idea. Um, and if you think about you know, walls without a roof to them, there's so much stuff you can do with walls, either as pathways, as places, as play. So you know, consider that kind of stuff. Um, and they don't have to be very tall at all. Um, on the right hand side, you see um, th these kids were uh, at the school making, um, making a, I can't remember what they called it, but it was fashioned after um, some of the ancestral people that lived here. They had done um, a unit on, um, on the first peoples that were here, and they uh, then had the space that they could go out, collect rocks, make adobe bricks, and this is an, again an amalgamation of different stuff that they collected to put together, whether it was just rocks or whether they made adobe bricks, but then they were making this, this ruin. And um, they were actually happier with it as a ruin than it was, as, you know, there was no idea of actually making it enclosed and making it beautiful like a house. It was always like they could, they could build it and destroy it over and over again and keep it as ruin was really exciting to them. Um, and then um, the next picture you'll see are some, um, some stumps. Awesome, thank you, Shannon. Um, now this is another easy way to do it. Um, if you can get stumps from trees that have been cut down, if you hear if you hear that chainsaw going in your neighborhood, run on over there and go, hey, what are you doing with that? Um, you know, a lot of people, of course, use it for firewood, but maybe there's some chunks in there that they don't really need. Or if you have firewood, you know, don't necessarily cut them into those, you know, pieces that are ready for the fireplace. Keep them as keep them as logs. There's different places for the kids to sit. Great for the adults to sit. Also, of course. And then um, as they decay, that's very interesting, but at some point then, you know, you can throw them in the fire. They also make great um, pathways and borders too. So if you've got areas that you want to protect, you can set up the logs and go, we sit here, but we're going to protect the plants that are beyond it. Um, also great edging there, for, uh, for sandboxes as well. Go ahead, Sally. And endless fun, like Misty, I know you have like a, a cool little wheelbarrow. You can get like a kid size wheelbarrow and just have a pile. It's really great, heavy work. They can just pick up the logs, transport them, dump them somewhere else. Um, if you get, if you get, if you cut small enough bits, they're really great for building. So I could see your boys really enjoying just having a pile of them somewhere in the yard and they could pick them up and transport them wherever they want. Um, it's one of the easiest, easiest and hugely versatile uh, loose parts that you could find. We're trying to work with Colleen and some people in the city to actually set up something where there's a place called the Boneyard in the city where all of the old cottonwoods in the bosque gets taken to. And I'm just like, you guys, you shouldn't be calling this the Boneyard. This is like, this is like loose parts heaven, you know, in terms of like, um, these pictures that that Nikki has or having little stumps that they can walk across and stuff yeah. but we haven't figured stuff out yet because of liability you know they're like oh and how you know how would people um how would we get it to people she has agreed she has agreed that if somebody wanted to come in to harvest some stuff so I don't know if between the two of you if you know anybody with a truck but I can, I can follow up on that lead if you know someone or the two of you wanted to put your heads together and like just rent a little U-Haul truck for a day. I can talk to her and see if we could go there and pick up some bigger pieces that, um, you know, we would have to figure out who can chainsaw them uh, because they, that's the part, that's where we got stuck. That's where they were like, well, we can't really use city, you know, city time and city work and city equipment to sort of just produce it. But she has agreed that if I got some people together and we went into the boneyard that we can we can harvest some of what's there. So we'll make sure that Shannon and Misty and Misty FYI, Shannon FYI, Misty is our parent liaison for Seoul. Sorry to be putting that into this 
um, Nature Nino's conversation right now. Um, and Shannon uh, may be on one of the calls this week, so you might see her name just as a just to place it in the back of your your head. But we'll make sure you two mamas have each other's numbers, and we can follow up on that together and figure something out. Awesome. Okay, I've got just a couple more slides, so I'm gonna go through them as quickly as I can. Obviously on the left-hand side, a little teepee, shade cloth, just a sheet, um, and that's just long poles. In fact, those poles are made out of saguaro ribs, so your teepee doesn't have to be extra strong. Um, in fact, the lighter it is, um, if it falls, it's not going to hurt anybody's head. Uh, saguaro ribs are, are almost like bird bones. They're, they're really, really hollow, um, and they just dug them into the ground a little bit, and they didn't have to worry about if it fell on a kid's head, nobody was going to the hospital. In fact, they probably barely even noticed. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to show you uh, uh, my yard that I uh, finished in, in, um, in Phoenix a few years ago and kind of the transformation that took place, just absolutely really quick. This is the backyard. You can see a plate of green, right? In other places, grass grows really well. This doesn't really grow well in Phoenix, so we recommend that people don't put in grass at all. So I moved into this house in 2010, and in 2011, I removed that grass. And this is just in the next few years. This is about four years later. Um, and that tree that's in there, I got to the point where I had to, if I lived there any longer, I'd have to call an arborist um, because I could no longer trim it. But when I got that tree in, it was about two feet tall. Um, and that's just water harvesting right off my roof. So, um, you know, the smaller the plant is, obviously the cheaper it's going to be. Um, it does take a little bit of time to get going. Uh, just kind of depends on, you know, you can make that choice too. When you're looking at different plants, it might be a really slow growing plant or it might be a really, really fast growing plant or one that needs more water to get established or one that needs less. Um, and um, I recommend to you, if you're gonna put in trees in your yard to figure out where those trees go first. You don't want them getting into the, uh, you know, the pipes um, you don't want them getting it up into your um, up into your cable lines or telephone lines or electricity lines that are up above. So and they take up a fair amount of space and you're not going to move them once they're in. So I, you know, I tell people figure out your trees first and then you can figure out everything else around your trees. But that's just, um, you know, we talked about how lush Washington State was. I made this backyard very lush. This is actually right before I sold the house. And so almost everything that was normally on the ground is out. I wanted to make it so that people could actually see that there was ground. Um, but otherwise it was a lot more it was a lot more lush regularly um and then uh pictures of the front yard will come in out my I opinion also... it looks so much better oh yeah i love it it looks so oh, much yeah. better we had so much we had so much fun back there uh the dog loved it turtles loved it even the teenagers you know the kids were teens by that time they loved it uh their friends would come over and be like wow this is amazing <laughs> um sold it really well even i thought oh gosh it looks like a lot of gardening to do the next the next people who bought the house just loved it um, so in the front yard, it also had grass. Um, and again, that was all sprinklers. I didn't have to do anything to the irrigation ex except screw off the sprinkler head and screw in a drip head. That was as simple as it got. Um, but uh, I took, I removed all that grass. So you, now you can see it with the grass removed. This is in the front. And then um, when I, again, created a water harvester and put in plants. And uh, that was before I trimmed it up for <laughs> for selling the house, but it got very, very lush again. And that's just a 20 by 20 space. So it's really, really small. Um, so uh, my website to get in touch with me, you know, after we're done with this uh, program, um, I'm very happy to give info, you know, over the phone, over email. Um, I have a, a Facebook page, Nature Play Learning, and that's a great one to like share or ask questions, um, share what you're doing. And then my, um, my site, natureplay.com. Um, I try to keep up on the resources. I've been having a very busy life this uh, COVID season uh, because my job didn't quit and I added, of course, more things to it. Um, so I haven't uh, updated my website as much, but it's a great way to kind of get an overview of what I've got there. Um, so now I wanna go back to, uh, to working on your yards. We, we did some work on Misty's yard last time. I'm hoping that we can start with Shannon's this time, but I don't have pictures of her place. You're on mute. That's, uh, that's totally fine. And again, we've just got the two of you. So if you're both in agreement of going over um, got tons noon, of yep. I think what we could do, we have about, it's now about 1143. So if we roughly think about if, if it's okay with, um, with Shannon and Misty, if we did 15 minutes each, does, does that sound good to you guys? Are you able to stay till 1215 and we'll do 15 minutes with Shannon and then 15 minutes with Misty? Absolutely. Yeah? I can. Okay, so I'm going to share the little picture that Anya, 
the beautiful little picture that Anya drew. Um, and then uh, you, you ladies take it away. I might be getting off of my chair in a minute, just so you all know, because I've just got some guests here, um, but I'll be back in a, in a sec. They've been, we got a flat tire yesterday and Odin just, my teenage son just changed his first tire while friends were watching. So um, I'm gonna go check in on that quick, but I'll be back to my seat in. in okay, no problem. Shannon, can you tell me a little bit about how this picture came to be and what's what's in this what's in this picture? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, after after last the last time the part one, so we got on YouTube, um, my daughter and I, and we watched some of the uh, what is his name? Rusty Keeler stuff. Rusty Keeler. Yeah. We watched some of that, and then we went and we did a, a Google image search for nature playscapes, and I just kind of asked her you know, what would you like to see in the yard? And she um, is really into the idea of having a ladder and having a slide. She would love a slide. She wanted a slide that would go from one side of the yard to the other, which, <laughs> and then- that's a, that's a tall order right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, just after thinking about that and talking with my husband and, and I started kind of drawing a map and we have some, some neat ideas I'm really excited about. We're gonna put a, not exactly a, a tree house, but like a, a deck, you know, maybe four feet off the ground and it's gonna go around the tree. And we're, we're gonna actually put a slide off of that and a ladder going up to it. Um, she has her little mud kitchen area and that's where she would, she's really excited about the, having a stump for a table and chairs out there. So I'm very excited that there could be a place where we can go and find them because I, I haven't had any luck just asking around to see if anyone has some wood laying around. Um, yeah, but just coming up, you know, thinking about how I can make places like her little mud kitchen area, we're going to kind of um, make it a space by putting in a flower bed that I'm hoping we can grow some really tall flowers there um, that she can use, you know, in her cooking. Uh -huh. uh, but that will kind of separate it. But the, for the most part, it you know, we've got things around the edges of the yard, but it's the whole middle part that I'm kind of like, well, how do I break that up? I want to put in some pathways, yep. but I'm, I'm just not sure exactly what that would look like. Okay, okay. Um, so you said that the, the middle was, was pretty flat. Um, do you have grass in there now? Do you have plants that, or um, is it dirt or um, it's, it's mulch dirt or? And, and it's dirt and weeds. So we're yeah. in the East mountains. So it's um, yeah, it's mostly dirt and then okay weeds. So one of the things you can do when you think about the blank slate backyard, which a lot of us get, um, is putting paths through that don't just go from point A to point B but they meander through that space. If it's at all possible to put in at least an S shape or even a loop so that um, it can kind of double back on itself. And you don't have to make it just one circle. You can make it kind of go in and have a little curly cue on it in the sense that there's pathway and then there's loop. So they can get out of the pathway if they want to. So it's not just continual loop. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say if you kind of start setting that down and you can put something down in your yard just that's just temporary and kind of see how she plays in it. You know, you might put down, um, uh, if you've got like, um, if you've got a can of spray paint around the house that you're not gonna use for anything else, you can have to actually just like paint a pathway on the ground, see what she thinks of it. Is it big enough? Is it too small? And then, you know, that's gone in a couple of days because you just, you know, the dirt and the, and the rain will take it away. Um, and then you can kind of build up from there. She likes it a lot. What about putting rocks in there? And that, if you're not going to turn in the whole yard, um, um, you know, that might be a good way to kind of start. Um, I've got a yard that, um, or the, the yard that I had, that was, um, once we removed the grass, it was a very blank slate. And I had to kind of figure out, well, how, do, where do I want those paths at? If I want a tree, um, the tree was the important part of putting a rain harvester through it. So the rain harvester actually became the path because we just don't get that much rain. Um, mm -hmm. So instead of walking around on the dirt, people could walk around on the, on the rocks instead. And, um, and again, that kind of twisted through. So it hit that water harvester also hit, it hit a bunch of different plants. Um, but how I did it first, because I didn't know if that's where the water would go, 
I just kind of um, raked and dug a little bit, got the hose out. So it was a lot of just, just play um, and trying to decide, does it, is it something that I like? Is it, um, you know, how's that working? But later I had to, I knew I had to dig in the ground. So I didn't want to put anything in there that I was going to have to then uh, remove again. Um, so you might think about that for your blank slate is um, just play first with, with the idea of pathways. Does she like it? What kind of play does she do in there? Uh, maybe it's too small. Maybe it's too big. If she likes, um, you know, if she likes her um, trike, uh, you can bring in, um, you can bring in a pick or something and get rid of those weeds so that you make more of a path that she can, she can wind around. And then if that's working out really well, then you just keep on solidifying that path and breaking up the areas around it so that you can put in plants. And you can do that in small little chunks. You can even go, I, I can't do this entire yard, it's just huge, it's 9,000 square feet or it's 5,000 square foot yard. Um, I'm gonna do though this little 20 by 20 space or a five by five, five space, or I'm just gonna start with this pathway and then we'll work on other stuff. So does that help make it more manageable? Yeah, yeah, and I love the idea of using the spray paint to kind of just see what, what she likes. Oh, yeah. And, and if you don't like it, you just scrub it with your foot and you try again. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, or if you've got idea. a lot of sticks laying around, you can also put it, you know, mark it out with some sticks too. And, uh, and again, very, very easy to move. Um, and uh, she talked about a twisty slide. One option for you is so that you don't have to like worry about, because you can go out and buy, you can go out and buy yourself a playset, you know, and, and, and do uh, nature play kind of around that playset. You can also get yourself a, um, a slide that's been, you know, maybe the plates that I know play sets after a while, they'll, um, they'll break down either the wood will decay or the, the metal will start to get rusty or whatever. Uh, um, but those plastic slides are still in really great condition. If you have enough uh, space in your yard, you can build up a hill and put that plastic slide right on the hill. And then uh, it becomes a lot, uh, it becomes used for a lot of different types of play hill slides. You can get on and off a hill slide really easily. So kids will make that into a game, whereas if it was a freestanding slide, they can't just necessarily just, you know, go off the slide. Um, and it makes it a little safer as well. Um, and they can do all kinds of different, um, I guess just because it's on the ground, it lends itself to a little bit more play than, than a slide that's freestanding. But of course you can do a slide that's freestanding as well. Um, and you can this actually- This is one of Rusty, I have, I have one of Rusty Keeler's books here called um, Natural Playscapes. It's a wonderful book. I'm going to flip through it and find a picture of the of a a landslide with like what Nikki's yeah. talking about. He is the really, big really awesome on the hill on the hill like slides. Them. Yeah, he's very very big on getting at least one hill in your spaces or some uneven ground, and he's really big on the hillsides. Again, it makes it so that um, especially well because he does a lot of childcare centers and. Um, so they, they want it as safe as it can be, but as adventurous as it can be at the same time. So a hill slide, you don't have to worry about that it's six feet apart from anything. You don't have to worry about children falling off in safe zones. It's already, because it's on the ground, it's already Here's very, one. Very safe. Can you guys see this picture? Um, you're only sharing the twisty slide slide. Right? Oh, oh but the problem. one, in, um, yes, I can see that, Sally. I can see it's on me the screen. that now. I'm holding up in my screen. Oh, that I'm, I'm holding up in my screen. You see yeah. that? You see how that plastic yes. slide yes. is just kind of on the green hillside? So something like that, like Nikki's saying. And I bet if you Googled old slides, or believe it or not, we do have some play companies in town. I can look up a few um, resources for you guys. I know one is called Exer Play. They might have some old stuff. Here's a fun one with um, Check Out the Snow. Oh, uh-huh. And, and Sally will probably remember this. We took a tour in Prescott of a, of a child care center and they had a hill slot. They had a hill of tires that it was, a, you know, a pyramid of tires that they created and they put a, 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 an old slide on that hill. So it served multiple purposes there. Um, and you can get them kind of- Ooh, in another to, place. Go ahead, Sally. Sorry. Sorry, my delay is so bad. I always feel like I'm like busting into the conversation. Like I actually start talking at a time that's appropriate, but by the time my voice carries. Um, uh, Misty and Shannon, if you have never been to Tingley Park before, no, not Tingley. Um, oh God, what's it called? Uh, what's the name of the, the park that's right across from like Explora and Natural History? 
Tigway, yeah. Tigway Park. You go to where their place structure is, you will see, my kid used to love it when he was younger. They're like concrete slides that are built mm -hmm. into this sort of wall. Um, go and check that out too. It's a really cool um, yeah. other kind of natural slide option. I don't know quite how they made it, but I think that there is a way to build those. I'm gonna shut up so that, because you know, we um, I'm also going to put in chat, I um, hopefully you guys can still hear me. Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm also going to put in chat my Pinterest board. Um, and again, I go through fits and spurts. So I, I'm either really active on finding pictures and putting them up or not. But it's another great resource for um, a lot of different ideas. And some of them, multi-million dollar ideas, like the San Antonio um, Zoo has an amazing play space. And others are just backyards. So. Um, and it, you know, feel free to. Um, I, I'm not all that versed in Pinterest, so but I'll get back there at some point and put some more pictures up. But that's a good start for you. Um, so tell me again now. So I see the twisty slide. What else is going on that, that she wanted in her dream? Her dream oh, yard? well, this, this other one that she shared, um, she just did this yesterday. So it, she's got a big tree and a swing. Right. which she, she actually does have. So the way our, our yard is set up is we have, um, we're on a corner and we have just, the part I'm looking at um, now we've just fenced off. So it's a place that she can play kind of um, with less supervision yeah. and mm -hmm. it's not as open to the road like, cause, because there's a cedar fence up. So she's got, she's got a swing um, outside of that fenced in area. And this, this is the tree stump with the stump chairs and a vase of flowers on the top. And then a trampoline. She would love a trampoline. We're, we're not going to be able to get a big trampoline. But if there's something else, you know, I'm thinking big rocks that she can jump off of maybe would help satisfy that. Um, uh, another another option for you instead of uh, and it might even cost more than a trampoline, uh, but another fun option is called the spider web. So it's um, it's like pilings that have been driven into the ground um, so that they're very stable. And by piling, you can use a log, you can use uh, treated wood, you can use a plastic, um, you can use a, a, a sturdy pipe, something that something that children will see easy enough and not just like run into. Um, mm -hmm. But you can put about eight or ten of them up, anywhere from six to six to ten, um, and then string rope between those pipes, um, or between those pilings, so that it starts looking like a spider web. And if you make it fairly slack, you don't want to make it slack enough that they can wrap the rope around their neck. Obviously, that's that's where you stop at. But you don't have to make it very tight. Um, and if you make it really low to the ground, because it's a little slack. Um, and you, can, you might even be able to find a fishing net. I, I'm not quite sure where, but um, who knows? Um, maybe, maybe Etsy has a fishing net or something that people are thinking would make a great craft supply. Um, but you can, t you can tie that to the pilings. And um, because it's not high, um, you're not really worried about falling. Um, but because they're not tight, it's really wonky to, um, to play on. And uh, talk about motor skills. Um, and I've seen several of these like professionally done spider webs. And um, I've always thought, oh, these are gonna be scary. It's gonna be difficult. And, and I'm not, uh, I like to keep my feet firmly on the ground. And there's a lot of people that do great at climbing. I'm not one of those. I want my feet firmly on the ground. And I was actually able to stand up and maneuver around this spider web while standing and not having to hold on to anything. So mm -hmm. um, it was definitely like early childhood kind of, kind of level. So that's something to look into. Like I said, they, they, they do sell those for your black backyard that might cost more, might wind up costing more than a trampoline. But when you look at it, you know, maybe if you're, if you're handy or your spouse is handy um, or you've got a handy man that kind of comes by, you can, um, you know, create, create that at home. Um, but the point, the point that's really important is that those, the pilings are really strong in the ground and you can do that with, um, with concrete. Um, but of course, if you do that, it's harder to move later. I mean, it's not, it's not impossible, but it's harder to move later. And you want something that's big enough so that a child won't be running and tripping over it. And that's, it was interesting when I was studying risk in, um, in play, um, and they were talking about what's, you know, is it, is it the, 
Is it the uh, playground materials that are scary or is it certain types of materials that are da more dangerous for kids? And, and what happens is they actually ran into posts. Um, you know, they ran into each other, most of all, <laughs> and then they ran into posts like that was the second most most dangerous thing on the playground is running into a post because they're looking behind themselves going, oh, they're still chasing me and punk, you know. So, um, <laughs> you know, making sure it's something that can be seen really well. That's why I talk about pilings like uh, at a marina because they are big enough to, to see. They're also, they're so big, you know, and fat that you can, you know, they can, they can be seats too. And those can be a couple inches, you know, five, 10 inches off the ground to about 18, 20 inches off the ground. Um, uh, and maybe even a little bit taller, maybe 24 uh, inches off the ground. And that, that spider web um, is still pretty fun. And before you get ropes, in fact, if you don't have ropes, you can also um, string um, uh, fabric between like a hammock. Um, mm -hmm. And you can just take one long, long, long piece of, um, piece of material. And for that, you'd want it as tight as, as, tight as you can get it around those pilings. Um, but the fun part about the pilings is you can change that out. You know, if it's got a hole drilled horizontally through the, through the, near the top, you can tie different things around that piling. And um, that's great, um, you know, great play for um, just different types of uh, fight, you know, gross motor skills. Um, again, because it's a little on the lucky side. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds yeah. intriguing. I'm going to have to look online to see what those what those look like. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. And I'm going to chime in and say it's noon now. So maybe if Shannon has one more question or comment, then we'll switch over to Misty. Yeah, no, I think I think I'm good. My questions that I had written down have all been answered. So thank you. Well, hopefully you can post some pictures on the Nature Nino site or on my Nature Play site, uh, Nature Play Learning site, or the Facebook site. And you can, uh, you know, tell us how it's going. Sure, sure. Thank yeah. you. Did you want me to get watched in, Sally? If that's okay with Misty, and we just advance to Weston's picture and just kind of, um, you know, I can introduce him to my friend Nikki quick and explain how she helps uh, design really fun place, play spaces. And we love this picture from him. Let me go can get him. Tell us more about what he loves in his yard. I think it'd be really cute for the module. Oh, Sally, I am still seeing Anya's dream play yard on the shared screen. There we go. There's Weston. Okay, I just switched to Weston's yeah. and it's going to take a minute. I can see it now. Okay, can you see it now? And I gave those, I gave um, them Odin's old zip line. I don't know if they figured out how to put it up yet, but Weston awesome. and Bennett were super excited for that. Super, super excited. I don't know what we can do about the clouds part. <laughs> well, I see yes, he has exactly. a ladder too. That must be a popular... Yes. A popular thing. And ladder options. And Shannon, I can, I'm going to bring these two books to, to Misty to share, to look through, and then we can figure out a way to lend them to you. Hi, Weston. I mean, hi, yeah. Hi, Weston, buddy. How are you? Are you doing well? Good. You're doing good? So, um, uh, Miss Sally has a really special friend, Weston. Her name is Miss Nikki. Miss Nikki, can you can you wave your hand? And Miss Nikki works with works with young children very much in the same way that Miss Sally does. But she has one extra superpower, Weston. She really knows how to design backyards that are super cool for friends to play in so that you don't necessarily have to go to the park or go to the forest. You can have an adventure in your own backyard. So this wonderful picture that you drew this morning when you were talking to, you were talking to mom about your dream backyard is here on the screen. And we thought it would be really fun if you could tell Miss Nikki yourself in your own words about this picture, but if you can also to talk about if you could have anything in your backyard and understand you might not get everything you want. It's sort of like making a Christmas list for Santa Claus, you know, but if you could dream up anything in your backyard, what would it be like? What would it look like? So we're going to give the mic to you and you're going to talk to Miss Nikki and tell her about this wonderful picture you drew. Okay, go ahead. 
don't want you don't so want to right. tell I'm, I'm new so I'll, I'll talk to you Weston and hopefully you'll you'll put in I know that if we saw each other we would get along fantastically but it's a little it's a little weird on the computer my name's Nikki it's so nice to meet you Weston and I'm looking at your picture and I'm seeing for your backyard we saw pictures of your backyard a couple or last week or a couple weeks ago whenever we we met last and and I saw that there was tons of room to play I saw that you had a big sandbox and a trampoline and a pool. So you have all kinds of really great fun stuff to play with. And you have a couple more ideas of what you'd like to do. So can you tell me about the swing that's in the drawing? No? Okay, that's all right. Well, when you're ready, you can let me know. I kind of expected that. That's okay. Um, <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. That's okay. I kind of thought because he saw me and he's done yeah. forest. No, that's, that's okay. I'm new. Day, I'm new. It's so all right. I totally understand. Um, well, Misty, can yes. you tell us about the elements of Weston's drawing? Yeah, so uh, we're really trying to figure out where we're going to put this zip line. Sally let us borrow one that her son Odin had when he was young. So we're trying to figure out where to put that. Not sure we can figure that out. Um, we really want shade. Um, that's why he put clouds in front of the sun so that we could spend more time in our yes. backyard. Yes. Um, and then one thing that he talks about is a lot besides the pool is getting, he wants to have the hose on all the time. And I know it's great to have it on to water our grass, but we want to figure out something that we can channel water somehow where it's not just going to the bottom of the sandbox. Is that, yeah. Um, let's see, a couple ideas for you. Um, you can channel water with things like um, uh, even just a kind of a slippy slide, um, tarps, um, uh, gutters. Gutters have, you know, you can, you can buy gutters. Um, they have sharp edges, so you have to figure out how to keep those edges from being sharp. Um, um, but of course, there are lots of fun. Um, uh, pipes also kind of cut mm -hmm. in half. Um, and um, in your yard part, you know, it, the thing about sand is it's obviously it's gonna drain really, really well. So as soon as it starts going into the sandbox, it's just gonna go into the sandbox. Um, you can also add to your sandbox um, some silicone to help kind of stick it together. Um, and there's uh, sand for uh, when you're putting down pavers in your yard and you want sand between the pavers. It kind of has a sticky gel mixed in with it. You can't see it, it's just there. Um, and if you put some of that in your sandbox, it will change the, you know, the sandbox sand is it's very dry and gritty. It's just right after it rains, it just becomes dry again. But this um, uh, mortar sand, and I can't remember exactly what it's called, um, has that, um, has kind of a, a um, a compound in it that helps it to kind of stick together and oh, that gosh. will change the um, the, the um, structure of the sand in your sandbox. So you have a huge sandbox so um, that will not cost you a dime that will cost you a lot of money um, but if you take some of that sandbox sand and maybe put it in the tub and buy one of these three dollar bags of, of uh, paver sand and start mixing them together you'll kind of see how they're different. And okay. It might, be, it might be interesting to kind of at least it's worth the three bucks to play with no matter what. Um, and then you can kind of decide whether you want to do more with it or not. Uh, Weston, I see the picture you're holding up. Can you hold it up again so I can see it a little better? Changed his mind. Okay, that's right. That's right. He'll come back. Hopefully I'll catch him at the right time. Uh, yeah. Another another thought for the zip line that you were talking about. Um, I have some pictures of the Adventure Playground in Berkeley, California, and they had an amazing zip line. These pictures are going to be really hard. Um, they're going to be kind of hard to see, but I'm going to see if I can share my screen so you can see them. Um, and uh, I'm trying to get to one of them that will look. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. Um, okay, let me try to share the screen. What they did on their zip line was they created um, one hill, and um, and that's where the zip line started. So that hill was it was a it was kind of a really badly done. Um, uh, a tree fort in the sense that it was, it was, it was uh, tell me when you see this picture come up. Um, so do you see a picture on this? Okay, this one. Yeah, we see it. Okay, and there we go. Weston can recognize it's a zip line. So on the back here under what's the painted stop sign, um, that's just kind of like pallets, um, 
uh, staple, you know, nailed together. I think it's like four, six, eight pallets um, to make a to make a frame and then a landing spot. So it's probably three, four feet off the ground. And um, that's where this and the zip line is on a post up above it. So that's where the one end of the zip line is kind of attached to. And that one again, you have to whenever you're attaching something to a post, you've got to put that post way in the ground. Um, you know, you're trying to make it earthquake proof and and um, and uh, have it, you know, it's almost like a flagpole staff um, and you're going to have it cemented into the ground. So you want to figure out where that goes first and then build this platform around that post because um, you want that to be ultra, ultra sturdy. And in Rusty Keeler's, he was talking about, uh, he has one, um, he has a, one webinar where he's talking about um, how to construct backyard stuff and they have a, they have a, a swing on a, on a post and a, and a, a tree house. So listen to that because he says, if you're going to build it, build it strong, go, go big. Um, better to be safe on that because it's going to be tall enough. You know, if it's under if it's under three feet from the ground, you don't have to worry about it as much. But above that, they really start making things sturdy. Um, so your zip line will want to be attached there, um, and then so that's it's attached at a point that's like nine, ten feet up in the air. The the landing is only at about four feet up in the air, and then it's attached. The zip line's attached on the other side to another flagpole again, like nine feet up in the air. Um, and in the middle, it's a fairly slack enough rope that when they get on the zip line, um, they're gonna fall in the center. And then they've got mounds of sand underneath. So they've got a place for the kids to land. You can use, um, you can use bark mulch, sand is even a little bit better. And that might be, you know, if you're looking for stuff to do with the sand in your sandbox, uh, that's a great way of like, you're just sharing some of it. It was a pool that was converted to a sandbox, right? Okay. So, um, so you've got quite a ways because um, you've got a lot of sand in that pool. And as you're taking some of that sand out, it's just going to create a, a, you know, a border around the sandbox anyway. So um, it's, it, and that's, make that at least 18 inches deep under the entire zip line. Um, and that will get displaced all the time. So you got to throw that back in there. And then you're not worried about them falling off that zip line. Um, you know, especially as a, you know, it'll, as they get older, they you you know you might crank up that that uh, rope so it's not as slack, or get rid of some of the sand underneath because there's just no more risk to it. But while they're young, put just keep putting that sand there. And then when they're jumping off of it, they're ju they're jumping into that sand, um, making that risky play. You know, at the level that they needed that. And as you, as you see them change, you you change that level. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get you the next picture in this series. Um, so here's a horizontal picture. You can see how long that um, that zip line is. I mean, that it's easily 50 feet long. <laughs> um, so we don't have that kind of space in our yards, most likely. Um, but you know, you're the one that gets to decide how far apart those those flagpoles are going to be, and you can then use those flagpoles for other things. If you're done with the zip line in 10 years, um, um, you know, that might be a great place for. Um, for, for something else in your yard that, that you want, tetherball or, I mean, the um, posts in your yard can do so many different things. Um, so that's, it's really helpful. Let me see if the next picture has, okay, no, we're not, not getting into the next one. Um, but again, you can see where the kids are going to drop and it's all filled with sand. So awesome, awesome fun stuff on there. Um, oh, there was another part that he was telling me about. That I didn't get to. Was there another another element that we haven't touched on yet? I think the other only other thing was the shade. Okay, okay. Um, so again, that that flight pole that you're setting in is a great anchor for that shade cloth, and you can anchor the shade cloth at the same time you have the zip line anchored in that same that same post. So it's going to have double purposes for sure. In fact, okay. if you, uh, lower down on that post. Uh, if there's any way that you can have holes drilled in that metal post, and then you can add, you can tie other things to it, you know, the string lights and, um, uh, yeah. or you, you put a collar on that post and then that's where the, you know, that, that acts as a rest for anything else you want to tie to that post. Posts just are, posts and walls are just amazing and plants. So I am picturing, at first I was picturing like a wood post uh, that's, but you're saying it like a flagpole, like a metal flagpole. You're going to have to go taller for a zip line because it's going to have to have that dip in the center. 
Okay. So, but um, an actual play, an actual flagpole. I think a flag post would be the cheapest and the easiest, and you can put that in yourself. You'll want to make okay. sure that's level. You know, get a get a level so it's nice and straight. Um, but I think it needs to be. Um, a uh, they'll tell you how, how deep it needs to be in the ground. It's probably going to be about 18 inches, and it needs to be cemented in the ground. And at some point, you can take that out. You know, that cement foot then is going to be about a foot wide. You know, if you'd imagine a, a Home Depot bucket, it's going to be about that size under the ground. And you want to have that several inches under the ground, at least five yeah. or six inches, so that the kids don't get rid of the dirt over the top and then have the cement foot sticking out. So it's got to be down in the ground. But then you've got this piece of metal and, um, and it's, you know, if you can put it nine feet up in the air um, and that because your, um, your rivet where it's going to be, um, it's not going to be at the very tippy top of that nine foot post. It's going to be a little bit further down. But if you look into, I want to put a flight pole in my yard, just use the same exact idea, the same parameters, the same installation. Um, and if you do two of them, it's going to go from one to the other. And maybe you want the other part of the zip line lower, but it doesn't have to be. They can, if they have a launch from one side, they're going to get the momentum to swing down. And um, it, it's at that bottom of the swing that they're going to um, launch off, you know, or they're going to they're going to fall off. And there's an exit, you know, if they're if the zip line continues through, you have to kind of see how it, you know, how it shakes out, but. Um, at, that end, at, at that exit, again, you want another big pile of sand um, or another um, landing platform to that, for them to arrive to. And I, um, that landing platform can be shorter. It can be at two feet high or one foot high. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a platform. It can be, you know, and the zip lines here, <laughs> the zip lines here is forever. Yay. Um, uh, and, and you can tighten that zip line. You know, you can, you might, because Weston's five, you know, you might make it fairly slack at first and kind of see how it goes. And if it's not fun enough, tighten it up and try again. Um, but you can remove that flake pole later. It's just a, it's just a cement foot. Like I said, it's, imagine a Home Depot bucket filled with cement underneath the ground. You can dig that out eventually. It's not going to be the easiest thing, but it's doable. Okay, I know it's weird. Um, we talked about going to 15 after. So, um, I'm, uh, I can keep going if you want. We can wrap it up, whatever, whatever you guys would like. Shannon has a question. You had started to say something about ladder options. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, I would that's love to hear more about that. Yeah, so some different ladder options. Um, pallets make great ladders um, because they have lots and lots of handholds. They're also a lot wider. Um, you can put, um, there's all kinds of great designs out there for making things out of pallets, you know, from, from tables and chairs to, um, to uh, goat feeding pins. Um, there's just tons of stuff you can do, you can do with pallets. Um, the tricky part about pallets is, is when they hammer them together, um, uh, there's gonna be lots of splinters. Every pallet you get is gonna have tons of splinters. So you'll have to decide whether that's the right choice for you or not. Um, when they hammer those together, they are not the, they are put together super, super fast. So double check it all over to see if there's nails that have, you know, that didn't meet the mark and are sticking out because as far as they're concerned, it's just for shipping, it's not for kids. So um, make sure it's sturdy, make sure it's on there. Uh, and obviously over time they do break down. So you've got to you know, do your due diligence and go out there every day and make sure that it's, it's structurally sound. But um, so that's one option for ladder. Uh, another way obviously is to, is to just put what's get, you know, a ladder doesn't have to be six feet tall. It doesn't have to have four rungs. It can be one rung and it can be another rung over here, you know, um, depending on um, how active your kids are, you, uh, you know, a ladder can be um, a, a, stick of, a stick of wood or even a two by four nailed to a tree and then another one six inches above it. Um, it could be just a, you know, if you go to those climbing walls and, they're, and they're, their um, steps are, you know, they're, they're teeny, so it doesn't have to be huge. Um, the younger the kid, the, the, bigger, um, the bigger it needs to be for them. Um, but the thing that's really important to remember with ladders is you want to make sure that their head doesn't get stuck. So um, I can give you actual dimensions from that. I'd have to look them up. Um, but if you imagine a kid wearing a helmet, anywhere from a toddler, you know, any, any yeah, you know, a 10 month old baby. So their little cute little head to um, a kid with a helmet on. That's the size that you want to avoid. That's the space size you want to avoid. 
So make it either smaller than that, like a like four inches or smaller, or make it bigger than that. And I think it's like 14 inches, but I can give you the exact measurements. And those are on, um, uh, you can, you can and anybody can access the playground safety certification stuff. Um, but, you know, they have found that kids have fallen through ladders and gotten their heads stuck with, and they're wearing a bicycle helmet because they were just riding their bike a second ago, and then they can't get the bicycle helmet off. So that's why the range is so huge. It's between toddler baby head to, to kid with helmet on. Um, and so, like I said, that's the spacing you want to avoid. If you have, if it's enclosed, like a square, if it's just uh, one piece, and then there's, there's no frame on the outside, and then another piece that they're climbing upward, you don't have that head entrapment because they can get out the side. Mm -hmm. So that's something to just make it make it uh, safe um, on that. Um, but hey, you can hey, use- Nikki, Misty was asking if you could, um, well, when you finish up with ladders, can you just um, review how big the bucket for the flagpole was, oh, whether you said sure. five gallons or not? So you don't want to actually put that flagpole in the five gallon bucket. Uh, I'm just using that as a, as a visual for you. Um, uh, you you can put it in the bucket if you want, but you'd want to you um, you still have to put that bucket into the ground. So it's still going to have to be at least 18 inches into the ground. It might even be 24 inches. So you're still going to have to dig a hole, um, and a hole digger makes it way easier. Or a, or a one of those spinny things you hold onto the top and it creates. I don't know what those are called, but Home Depot rents those kind of guys too. Um, and of course, before you dig, you want to make sure you're not digging into your cable line or your sewer. Um, but it has to be into the ground. Because otherwise, if you think about earthquakes, you know, if you if you just have a post stuck in a um, a bucket of cement, um, you could grab that post and still swing it back and forth. So you want this as sturdy as you can get it. And like I said, review, um, watch Rusty Keeler's. Um, I think it's his second or third installment where he's talking about um, constructing playground equipment in your backyard. Because he's he's not looking at it from oh my gosh, you have to be certified safety inspector. That's not where he's coming from, but he's still coming from, you still want it to be safe in your backyard. And obviously you're gonna put a lot of tension. There's gonna be a lot of, of movement on that rope. So the sturdier you can make it, the longer it lasts for them too. You'd hate to put it in. And then six years later, these kids are 11 and 12 and they're gonna be doing a lot more dangerous stuff on there. And that flagpole, if you see that flagpole waving, you're like, oh, God, we gotta dig that hole again and put it further down. <laughs> Um, so the more you can use, you know, the, the sturdier you can make it at the time, the better it's going to be. But it's going to it's going to look. Um, you can visualize a, a five gallon bucket, you know, 18 to 24 inches under the ground. But you don't have to use a bucket, or you can cut the bottom out of the bucket. Usually, you can just dig a hole well enough and pour your cement in, and and you're good. But uh, um, you can find plans for that on the internet really, really easily. How to put in a flagpole. And it'll, it'll talk to you about different heights too. You know, some people want them 50 feet high, other people want them 12 feet high. You know, you're looking for, you know, front yard flagpole design. Sounds like Shannon has watched some of Rusty Keeler and he calls, he, he refers to it as making it beefy. That sounds great. Um, I wanted to share just with Misty quick, one of Odin's favorite, and I mean, Anya, maybe two, but one of Odin's favorite things when he was younger that was so, so cheap that we brought into the backyard and would add water to sometimes is Nikki's going to know the name of it, but it's, um, it, it, it's like, it looks like a long, you get it at Home Depot. If you go look at Home Depot, like PVC pipes are great for, like I could see for your boys, Misty, if you got two big, huge orange utility, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot buckets, and then you got some PVC pipe stuff in those buckets, you could once in a while fill up each bucket and say, Weston, this is yours. Um, Bennett, this is yours. And, you know, that's the water allotment. And then they could play with the pipes and pouring water through the PVC pipes. You can get all different sizes. They can be twisted together, dirt cheap. Um, but what I was thinking of, Nikki, is we used to have, I don't know if it was a guttering thing. It was black and it looked almost like something that had been split, but we would put it up against his fence and it made a wonderful play thing for his little cars. He would like, you know, send his little cars down this thing because it was really, I think it must have, must have had something to do with guttering okay. um, because it was a good, I want to say 10, 15 feet long. And we would put it up against a fence or lean it against something into your sandbox. You know, and you can launch the little vehicles down this. It was like a little ramp for them. 
and it was such a cheap and easy uh, loose part that they love that he loved. He loved the, um, playing with. And I'll add totally on to that. That uh, reminds me of this really great idea. Um, a lot of houses will come with the gutter that goes down into the ground, and then there's a pipe that it's flexible and it's usually green or it's black, and that goes into the yard channeling the water away. Those are those are super cheap. Um, and, and what I would recommend is that you're using, instead of channeling that water just out of your yard, channel it into your plant. So unearth that, um, that culvert from your house, uh, um, use, that, use that gutter system to, um, to channel the water into your yard, and again, put in um, rocky drains to, to drain the water to the spots that you want. But then use that pipe that they have, that they're, uh, it's kind of flexible, it almost looks like a big accordion. It's like 15 feet mm -hmm. long and they're super, super cheap. And you can cut those in half. If you get PVC, it's a little little more difficult to cut in. But I, I love the PVC idea um, because PVC is very easy to drill in. You can make lots of holes in it. Um, it's very easy to cut. But uh, And then you can get little um, pieces. Of, you can get the elbow. You can get the T. And the kids can put that together. And it's just hand tight. And they can, you know, um, they can shove it together. Um, they are super cheap if you get them, you know, if you're looking at them, you know, at a... At, um, one inch size is, you know, you're going to get pieces and parts for 50 cents, 75 cents. And it's, and it's, it, it's just like connects except for, for kids that are bigger. Um, <laughs> um, and so it's- And I could see in your, your space again, I could see almost like one of those little kiddie pools that you could buy pretty cheap being like placed in, in your sand, you know, and then you can have water and sand play with some of these other loose parts in there and it would be easily like removed. Um, afterwards, and if they're making a big, wet, sandy mess, it's in that sandy area anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know, just some of my visions that came to mind. So I would say we should definitely wrap up at 1230. So I'm wondering if Misty has any other questions or um, comments about, yeah. No, I've got so many ideas now. <laughs> get the water. I did have a question about um, installing anything like a ladder step or those little um, wall climbing uh, nubby things. Can you install those on um, the, those wall, the cement wall? Because um, I, I, so you have for a some reason, I don't, yeah, you the have block a, wall. Yeah. Um, no, and the, the reason why is because, keep, keep in mind that that's all cinder blocks put together yeah. with a little bit of mortar and then something sheened over the top. Pretty so, weak. Um, it, it is, it's weak. Um, you know, if you, were just, if you were just putting a vine up, you know, you could easily put in a little eyelet, no problem, because yeah. it's, gonna, it's gonna barely hold on. When you're talking about your kids climbing it, it is not gonna survive at all. Just double checking. Yeah. I don't have any other questions. I feel like I've had the floor so much. I want Shannon to Shannon to get all of her info. Oh, I wanted to show I, I, definitely, you. I would recommend. Oh, go ahead, Shannon. You go ahead. Oh, I definitely want to follow up on this trip to the boneyard. That sounds amazing. Yes. Okay. Well, I have us, uh, those of us on the call today, I have us all looped in just via Facebook Messenger. So I would, I would suggest that Nikki put her, her links in there. Um, so if either one of you want to follow up with her and share what you're doing and or reach out to her for any other consultation, you could totally do that. This um, is really quick. Right, then, right where I took yes, the pictures of the zip line, here's, the, here's a kids playing on fishing nets. They were having so much That's fun. That's awesome. Yeah, very, very safe. And yeah. I'm just remembering too, that just for some reason brought to mind when my Odin was young again, one thing that we had for Shade Misty and we just put big, um, we just got good sticks from the forest and just kind of got them good and strong in the ground. And we got an old, 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 he loved it at the time. It was an old, old like World War II parachute. There's so many loose party things that you can find for so cheap. And we just draped this parachute with these posts and he had like a little play area under there. You know, there's so much, if you don't mind sort of that, like sort of hand, maybe sometimes junky look, <laughs> there's so much yeah. you can do and they're young. So, you know, they're, they're young for such a short period yeah. of time that and these, in my opinion, it makes sense to just, um, you know, to just think of it 
from that, that perspective, we had a lot of plastic crates, you know, that you can get at Target that we would organize toys in, but then those could actually be used kind of to climb on and um, to do different things with. It was uh, tons of fun. Um, hey, Weston, do you have anything uh, to tell Miss Sally about your picture before we say bye today? Is there anything from Forest School that you think would be cool if there was a way to kind of bring it to your backyard, like that log you love climbing on? Can we take those sticks from the forest? I mean, like the big ones? I would, I would say quietly if you just harvest. Yeah, I would. Yeah. You I can also look into uh, a, forest, uh, a forest gathering permit should barely cost you 15 bucks and then your butt's really covered. But I've taken things out of the forest a lot. You know, if you're not hauling a trailer of sticks, <laughs> if it was yeah. that visible, get, get yourself a fire collecting permit. That you can get, but you can get a gathering permit for super, okay. super cheap. But if you can also have it in the back of the truck and nobody's gonna, you know, it's gonna be, nobody's gonna see it and it's among your luggage or in a trash bag. Yeah. They're not in taking. pine flats, there I probably shouldn't say that. Don't break the law. Uh, material at pine <laughs> flats right now. Right. We don't want to, um, yeah, this is national. Wanna, wildlife you don't want to break the law, Mexico but uh, a tree cutting right. permit is really not very much money. It just kind of depends on the timing uh, of the year. Um, and uh, and a gathering permit is not very much money either. So. Yeah. Well, I don't mind contributing. Pine flats. They probably need the money right now anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, they do. And again, it's, it's yeah. probably like, last time I looked at it, it was like 15 bucks. Yeah. Um, okay. Worth it. Pine flats, there's a whole bunch of downs. They've been really thinning out. Um, and that gets that fuel out of the, so out of the forest, you, not that it makes a big dent, even, but. Yeah. yeah, you can even check in um, this week when you drop him off, you can go into the Sandia Ranger Station and ask them what that, you know, what that process looks like. Oh, yeah. Just pop right into the Ranger Station that you drive by all the yeah, time anyway. Drive by it all the time. And ask them if you wanted to. Yeah, if you wanted to harvest what it would look like. So okay. um, yeah, so definitely Nikki, get your links and stuff into that um, that messenger and we'll share it, we'll share it elsewhere, but so that these two lovely mamas have it directly. And then um, we'll see about maybe getting you back for some of that other, like the plant stuff, if you were able to do a little research specific to New Mexico, that would be helpful. Yeah, so I yeah, will talk absolutely. to Sarah. If you guys about can that. tell me, yeah, I would just need you to tell me you know what cities and then i'll look up the elevation and um because it, it changes so fast uh, you know between 1000 feet uh, and um you know your whole landscape is going to change so right hey weston you're looking real good my friend <laughs> <laughs> all right miss nikki thank you so much this was wonderful i could tell i could tell that um both of these parents right here their brains are just they're ticking away with ideas. Weston, Thank I can't you. wait to come and see your backyard after you put some work into it. It's going to be really cool. Yeah. Are you Thanks. ready to put some muscle into it yourself, Mr. Weston? Are you going to put some, some muscle in it to help moms get it done? Yeah. 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 You're going to have a great time. <laughs> He's a good nice helper. Nice to meet you, Weston. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Nikki. Okay. Thank oh, you. So much. Thank you, Shannon, for sharing your yard. Thank you, Misty. Have a I wonderful. Love the drawings. That was amazing. Bye. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon, everybody. Oh, Nikki, I'll be in touch. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. Ciao okay. for now. To be here again. Bye. You are very welcome. It was our pleasure. So I'm going to end this. Hi, Misty. Hi. And this afternoon, I will. Well, we're still on camera, but I'm going to work on that thing for tomorrow. Okay. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.